everyone. Happy Saturday. It's Lisa from Lisa's Painting Parties. It is just before two o'clock. We'll be starting our painting shortly. Uh, just getting everything ready and making sure our tech is up and running as per usual. As you guys join in, please say hi, wave, let me know that you're here. Um, I'm really excited to uh, paint from this uh, photo this week. It's a really nice relaxing view. Um, this one, um, we called it uh, Rolling Green Hills. Um, let me grab the picture as you guys are popping on. So this is the picture. It looks a little bit of a glare, but you get the vibe. So just grab um, this if you're joining in with us and painting along today. Um, go onto uh, our Facebook page and um, grab this picture from the previous post where we announced that we're going to be doing it, the one from yesterday, and then just have it available as a reference as we uh, paint along. Um, I know for some of you, you might have already thought of how you're going to modify it a little bit to uh, make it your own. Um, I wanted to again give a special thanks to uh, Rhonda Ben for uh, creating kind of like a mismatch of um, the different options and, and posting it. I thought that was a really great idea. Um, and I love the idea of putting a lake in it. So I think I'm going to be doing that today. Um, so in her option, she had, see if I can do this backwards. So see how there's like this light green kind of hilly area in between? she suggested making that into water and i think that would look really cool so i'm gonna try that for mine so i'll lead you guys in doing that into your background today um and i think i want to put it on some like party lights and stuff along the banister of the balcony because that's kind of my mood that i'm in um so i'll be doing that with mine as well um so think about how you want to modify yours a bit to make it your own and we can think about those types of ways to do it hi terry how are you today from Toronto? Hey, Jen. I know Jen's in Toronto as well. Got some Toronto people going on today. Where's all my East Enders at? Last week we had all of my Oshawa and a few other people out this way. <laughs> all right, so I'm just gonna give a bit more time, um, get everything ready to go. So once we have it all started, um, I have my, my water. I have two containers of water, just so I don't have to run and grab more in the middle because I've done that before. Um, I'm going to be using this um, canvas board. It's 11 by 14, so pretty big, but not crazy big. Um, trying to, the, the bigger canva, canvas is, the longer it's going to take to do this. Um, there's, there's quite a bit of detail in this, so I'm estimating, it depends how much we're going to go into the detail. Um, I'm thinking it's going to take us about two hours, I think, to do it, to be honest. Maybe a bit more um, if you want to get into a lot of the, the specific, you know, specialty-ness of it. Um, in terms of my brushes, I have, this is my large brush, so just in relation to my canvas. So just, so yeah, just keep in mind, when I say large, um, it's in relation to whatever canvas that you're using. So if you're using like a, a giant um, you know, 30 by 60 or something crazy, you need like really big um, paint and a lot of paint brushes and a lot of paint to um, get things done quickly and um, and evenly. So just keep that in mind when we're um, talking about sizes. Uh, this is my thin brush and then I have like a medium brush. So these are my three brushes that I'm using today. Um, they're all like flat. That's kind of what I'm comfortable with using. They're like flat ones. Some of them are more rounded. I do have a rounded brush here too. I do have some other brushes that I kind of like have pecking around other sides. Sometimes I grab them. I, I tend to stick to what I'm used to. I'm a creature of habit. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. You got lots of people joining in, which is fantastic. Hi, Deborah from Ohio. That's fantastic. Awesome. How's the weather out there? It was so weird today. It was rainy and cloudy and then it, the sun came out and now I think it's going to rain again. I don't even know. Um, so yeah, so as we're going here, in terms of our paint, I have whoop, this way, yellow, red, and blue. And then I also have black and white. So you have our main colors with your tints in them as well. Sorry, main colors and then your black and white. Um, I also have some pre-mixed colors that I might, um, I tend to lean towards, um, especially while I'm doing these live sessions. Um, just so I don't have to go back and pre-mix as I'm going. 
Um, so I do have a green that's premix. I have a brown, and I'm probably going to lean towards using those um, as we're going through this. Oh, awesome. I'm glad to hear it's beautiful there. That's fantastic. That's the best when it's just like that perfect, nice temperature. <laughs> we don't get too many of those days, I find. It's just been so hot last little bit. All right, and then with my paint, my paint brushes and my palette, I got my paper towel ready to go. I'm just going to grab a couple of sheets out just to prep as we're going here. And we'll get started in about two minutes or so, just so everyone has joined in. And when we start, so as with all, uh, anytime we're doing any paintings, um, particularly for, well, any paintings at all, really, whether it's from a photo or whether you are found a really nice painting that you want to emulate from online, whenever we're doing acrylic, we're always starting with whatever's furthest back. So we're going to start with this blue sky. The sky is slightly darker on the top, slightly lighter, and it's like a gradient. So we're going to start with that. And then we're going to pop some of the clouds in, and then we're going to build it from the back to the front. So that's how we're going to start it, and that's how I'll um, talk you guys through this today. Again, as we're going through it, I'm going to keep... The coloring similar um, but if you want to go rogue and make like a sunset sky do it so do whatever you want to do it will be the same type of concept so if I'm going with blue and I'm going with a darker blue to a white you can make it um, a red to a yellow you can make it like a purple to a, you can do whatever you want um, you can just alter kind of what I'm saying to match what your mood of the painting is gonna be all right so I'm just gonna get that back and plugged in hi Mary from Alliston fantastic I have to go up to Allison sometimes for work. Um, well, not lately, because <laughs> I've been laid off. But I'm going back to work at the end of the month, which I'm like mixed, mixed emotions. <laughs> but I um, will be out in Allison, I'm pretty sure, at some point. All right. All right. So I'm going to get the camera set up to my canvas. You guys can stop seeing my face for a little bit. But you'll still hear my voice. Okay, there we go. And then I'll probably zoom in a little bit now that I've learned how to do that. Let's try that out. What? Technology. All right. So there's the canvas. I'm just going to take a moment and put my hair up. And feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go on um, or make comments. Um, I know it's a little tricky if you're in the middle of painting. You're not. It's kind of hard to like stop and make a comment. Um, I'll keep an eye on as much as possible and answer you as soon as I can. If I can't, if someone else knows the answer, feel free to pop in, share your best practices. If you're doing something, it's turning out really good. I don't know if it's possible, but snap a picture and share it. Um, like, let us know what's going on. I really want it to be community. Again, I'm not professional. I just enjoy doing this. And um, so yeah, so I'm just having fun with it and I'm really glad you're painting along with me. All right, let's get some paint on my palette. So I'm gonna start with my blue. Again, acrylic dries very quickly. So I'm gonna put enough to cover and do what I need, but I'm not gonna put a heck of a lot because it will end up drying before I can get back to it. Oh, I'm definitely gonna need some more white today. I'm just gonna go grab that before I start it up. There we go. Just get a backup white going. All right. Okay, so let's start off with the sky. So we're gonna get this nice wash back here. I'm going to use my big old brush. And again, if you're joining, um, once the session is done, it will be available live on the site. Um, so you'll be able to watch the video your convenience at a later time. So if you find that the pacing is too fast or um, if it's too slow and you want to speed it up, you can do that. Um, it just wouldn't be available as the live's happening. It will be available afterwards. Okay, so what I'm going to do to start off First, I'm gonna eyeball how much of this I want the sky to be. So I want it to be about a quarter or so. Yeah, about a quarter-ish of the top of my painting. So I'm gonna start off with just wetting my paintbrush with some water, and I'm just going to wet my canvas a little bit. This will help with the um, blending of the paint. So it'll make it a nice gradient. I found a Spotify channel today, so hopefully you guys enjoy this music. It's kind of like a instrumental of like pop music. Kind of digging it instead of just some, I, classical has been okay too actually, but I needed something a little different. Okay, so now that I've wet it, I'm gonna get my dark blue and I'm gonna start off with that. And I'm gonna start with my dark blue at the top. 
And if you are painting with a canvas board or especially with a canvas, make sure you're getting your tops of your canvas and the sides as you're going, especially if you're planning to hang it up. So otherwise it's gonna look a little silly. Okay, so we're just going to paint, we're just using the pure blue. The blue I have is called Peacock Blue from the dollar store. It's nice and bright and vibrant. When you're using it with water, you'll notice that it doesn't, it's not very opaque. It kind of like spreads really easily and it stays that color all the way down, but like you'll see the brush strokes really easily on it. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of white and I'm just gonna go right on top of the blue, like right near the bottom that I just painted. Okay, and I'm just gonna bring it up into the darker blue. Okay, and I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna get white. I'm gonna go below the line, the last kind of blue area, just slightly above that paint stroke, and then I'm gonna brush that up. So now it's already creating a gradient. Okay, and I'm gonna do that again. So white, just below the last paint line, the stroke of paint that I've done, it's still on top of the wet part that I did on the canvas. And then I'm gonna bring it up. So now you have a gradient. Okay. That's how I do most of my gradients. I find it very easy to do that way. Cool. Now, I do want the sky to be a little bit more blue. Like right now it's very white. So when I put my clouds on it, it's not really gonna pop the way I want it to. So I'm gonna get blue and bring the blue down. So I'm gonna do kind of the opposite of what I just did. So I'm gonna get the full dark blue at the top and then I'm gonna pull that dark blue down. And everything, because we wet the canvas already, it's still wet. So it's going to allow us to blend it really nicely. And I wanna make it just a little bit darker. So I'm gonna get that dark blue again, start in the dark blue area, and then I'm gonna pull it down into the lighter areas. I'm not going all the way, all the way, I'm going almost all the way down. I'm trying to keep that gradient happening. Still want it a little darker, so I'm gonna put more blue. Okay, and I'm gonna get the white here just to help bring that blue down a bit. So I, I like to use other paint to bring the color. I don't like to use water to make the color um, spread or blend. I don't really like that too much, especially in gradients, because I feel like it just kind of, when you use water, everything kind of blends together. Sometimes it just creates a mush or just the one color. The water is really great to wet the canvas so that it makes it easy, but I don't use it for um, actual like blending the paint colors in. So I just put a little bit more white back in. I can't decide how dark or light I want this to be. I want it to be a little bit darker. I want those clouds to pop a little bit more when I put them in. Okay. And again, since we're working from a photo, if you want it to be exactly like the photo, I suggest printing the photo and, and putting that up. But a painting should be the feeling that you get from it and it should reflect that. So keep that in mind. So don't think of it being exactly the photo. That's not what we want to do here. Well, at least not, that's not what I want to do here. I'm not going to paint a realistic photo. That's not what I do. It'll look realistic enough. Like you're going to know it's sky and stuff, but it's still going to have a vibe. So I'm just bringing, I want to bring the sky down just slightly more, but I think that's where I want it to live. Okay, cool. So I want this to dry. So I'm gonna clear off my big fat brush here. And I try to take most of the acrylic out of my brush if I'm not gonna use it in a bit. Um, acrylic, once it dries, it's permanent. Um, it will ruin your, your brushes pretty good. If you get it on your clothes, you wanna get that paint out as fast as possible. 
um, or else you will have that on your clothes permanently. So I'm just trying to get out. Okay, cool. Awesome, so now, this is still pretty wet, so I wanna go into just plotting in a little bit of where I want some of the, the background to be. I wanna still get the clouds in before I actually put in the trees and stuff, so I'm not gonna get into that, but I'm just gonna start plotting in a bit of the green, that far distant green uh, background. Um, so I'm gonna use the pre-mixed green. If you don't have green, add yellow to your blue um, and mix. I would put a little bit of blue into the yellow until you get the color you want and go from there. Um, and then, do I want this yet? No. I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of black. I might wanna darken it a bit. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna play with these colors a little bit and see what I wanna do with it. Okay, I'm gonna think I'm gonna start with my medium brush to plot in some of this. Okay. So right now I'm just gonna use the green and I'm just gonna decide where I want that background to land. So, okay, so I'm just going to put a line, that's going to be the far distant trees that we can't really make out, we just know there's greenery here. Okay. And then I want to plot in that hill of green that lives here. Okay, and it's just a, just get the feeling of it. So I'm just gonna put in this green color in here. Okay. And I'm just using the straight up paint on the canvas. And you'll notice that you use a lot more paint to cover it this way versus when you put water on your canvas first that makes it easier to spread but it's more opaque when you just put the paint directly onto the canvas like this you might still need some extra coats on it though realistically if you want it to be more opaque because that's where i want this hill to live okay and then we're gonna have some trees and stuff come up this way i'm not gonna worry about that just yet Okay, this painting is definitely like two paintings in one because we're gonna have the landscape and then we're gonna have the foreground. So we're, it's gonna take a bit of time there. Sure, so Marion, I will do that for you. Is that, let me know if that is better. I just zoomed out a bit. I think when I zoom in, it kind of messes it up for some people. So hopefully that works for you. Hi, Asif, I'm glad you're joining this week. Awesome, okay. So let me see, is this dry? No, it's still wet. I don't have my fan in here today, so it's taking longer for things to dry. It's weird. <laughs> I got used to that process. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so I want this to be just a bit more opaque. I'm gonna add some more details into it once it dries, but I just want that to be there. I really wanna do the clouds. I don't wanna do it much more until I get those clouds in. I think I'm dry enough. A little bit of wet spots, but yeah. I'm gonna go and do some clouds. Now in this picture, we have like a giant kind of like grayish cloud coming in on the side. I don't know if I'm going to do that right off. I think I'm just going to kind of play with the clouds and play with some of the whiteness in there. Um, so I'm going to use the same medium brush. Okay. And I'm going to get white on my brush. Okay. I think I'm going to still maybe follow like how these ones go. So I'm just going to like put in just dabbing with my brush. Okay, and I'm just dabbing and deciding where I want this to live. Okay, let's put in some white. So I want to keep the edges with more white so as I go in down into it, it my brush kind of like stops having white on it I want to keep brightness on the ends there I 
I don't know, maybe I will kind of mimic it. So let's just dab in where we want these to live. Let's just dab and as we get further away we lose the white like the brightness and that is what I want to do and by dabbing this brush is pretty hard bristles so it's creating kind of like a good texture as I'm going okay, and I'm just gonna go back in huh, I want to wait till I want it to dry and then I'm going to go back in and put a little bit more white in certain areas. I think it's definitely not dry yet. No. <laughs> I'm so impatient. After having the fan in here and it drying so fast, I definitely, uh, definitely got a little spoiled. And with my brush, I have to watch for always doing the same motion and then it creating kind of like a stamp like pattern. So just watch for that on yours too. So just try to move your brush, um, like go one way and go another. Try not to always have it stamping your canvas the same way because then it's not gonna look as, as natural. I'm just adding a little bit lighter to the tips. I'm trying to make it a bit more opaque if I can in those areas. I think I'm liking that. There's pure white to those areas. If it ever comes down, it's just not white anymore. I want to add some ridges to these. Maybe there's like a line here. I'm separating that cloud from the other one. I, whenever I add like a the more pure white on it, it's kind of creating like another like dimension to either that same cloud or maybe another cloud on top of it. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to my um, thinner brush because I want to put in a few more clouds, but this brush is not gonna do it justice. It's gonna make them too fat, and I want them to be a little thinner. Hi, Asif. Yeah, um, so Asif, I do have a YouTube channel, but I have to say I'm really bad at um, putting up my live videos on there. That's my intention. I have to have a better practice to ensure that it goes there. But I do have a YouTube channel, and now that you asked, I will make an effort this week to get all my videos up there as well, <laughs> just for you. <laughs> so that is now my priority, and you now 20-some people have heard me say that, so now I have to do it or else you guys will be on me, which is good. Um, and you can't see the edge, and you can't see the left. Um, mm, okay, so I'm not sure which, I don't know if, I'm gonna move it like this, Marianne, and you tell me if that works better for you, hun. It's tricky, because it's showing up pretty centered on my um, phone, but it's a phone, right? Like it's, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to get white on my thin brush 
And I'm gonna do the same type of thing there, but I wanna just, I wanna just a bit th smaller clouds really, so I just want to go this route. I'm gonna do the same thing. This brush is not as hard edged, so I'm trying to watch it so it's not weird looking in comparison. And then as I go away, I'm trying to have less white on my brush. Kind of dab it a bit more. And again, clouds are like puffy and I'm not really sure. I'm just playing with it. Like I, <laughs> I know I'm not saying much about what I'm doing, but I'm just like dabbing my brush. Um, like I said, I start with a lot of white paint and I try to like figure out where I want that edge to be with the, with the pure white. And then as there's less white paint, I move away and I try to do like little dabs that don't look, um, really patterned that kind of still have like an organic feel to them. But you can put your clouds wherever you want. They can kind of look any which way you want. This one's gonna live kind of behind here and be like sweepy and weird. We did like, um, there's a lot of clouds that we did on our um, Canada Day painting. We did like a boat by the lake and that one was really fun. Um, I feel like I got much better at doing my clouds after doing that one. And I also learned that you just have to like let go. Like don't try to make clouds, just make smush patterns with your white in your beautiful blue sky and you're good. Think about color and pattern. Don't think about what it's supposed to look like. Just have fun with it. As I say, the photo is, is a good guide. So I am putting some clouds here. There's some clouds there, but these clouds don't look the same as the picture. And I'm not stressing about that. And I don't want you to stress about that either. I want you to have fun. other way <laughs> okay I went the wrong way it's like I was like thinking that in my head I was like wait which way is is the left on your side Marianne okay let's see if that works better let's see okay cool all right and I want to put in like a few little like loops like live weirdly over here. I just need them to like look a little bit more textured and less like lined in the sky. Well, sometimes they do have this appearance of like weird like streaky lines. I guess that's okay. So a few little baby ones there with the way I'm gonna put another one there's another one kind of like the little ones here in the picture so it's gonna it's gonna live there too in my painting just gonna make another little streaky line here Let's dab it out a little bit That's it. So I'm just gonna like little things. I don't know if I want to put any more. I kind of feel like that's so empty, but I think maybe I want this just to, yeah, that's what I want to do. Take that cloud and just bring it a little bit, make it a little, yeah, that's what I want to do. There we go. Maybe we're gonna put a little bit in the top. Well, we can't really see this cloud, but it exists above the picture. top of the canvas too for the continuity okay yeah I kind of I like that guy I just want to make a little bit there we go yeah I like that that 
that was actually a mistake and that looks kind of good. Okay, <laughs> so that works out good. <laughs> oh good, I'm glad. I'm glad that works for you, Marion. That's fantastic. Hope all you out there, everyone can see it okay too. You guys are good. All right, there's the clouds. Awesome. All right, so now we have this background going on. I do wanna put like a little bit of texture on it. Not like a heck of a lot, cause again, it's in the background, but I do wanna give it a bit of um, something. So like there's stuff that's on there. It's maybe a couple different colors. Um, I'm gonna mix like a little, little, little touch of black into my green. Um, black is so powerful, so please be cautious when you're mixing black into anything because it will overpower the um, the color. So just use a little bit and then add more as you need. So now I have uh, kind of like a darker green on my brush and I'm just going to kind of do what I was doing with the clouds. I'm just going to add some like smushes with my brush in this area. Because in the picture there's some areas that are darker. Okay, so I'm just going to put in some smushes to kind of show there's shadows that are happening. And I want this to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to make this, but this isn't going to have any, we're not going to be able to see anything back here. Here is just, it's too far away. But I do want it darker than that other one. So I just use that darker green and I'm just putting the other green on top of it, the original green. And I'm using a little bit of water just to smooth out some of my lines because I kind of, this brush is very, this medium brush I have is very rough. So it'll look weird on top. Okay, so now that I did some of these dark spots, still kind of wet, I'm gonna use that green color I initially put on and I'm just going to dab around it and I'll kind of mix them a bit. And I might still go back and put some more dark into it just that's going to make it look a little bit more natural. It's not going to be as um, like as a contrast because now you'll be able to blend them both a little bit. Okay. But I still want to have different values. Like I don't want it just to be like a blur of color. That's kind of like a blur of color. I still want to have a, a little bit of difference between you know, see some dark areas and some lighter areas. I'm just going to re-put in some more dark spots. Okay, and then I'm just going to... And then even if my line on this one's a little bit off, that's fine because it's a little bit closer. So maybe we see some of the texture of this mountain on the top. So that line, I'm not going to make it straight. That one's super straight because it's far, but this one is a little closer. So it's going to have like a little bit of texture. That's kind of it. Let me, I'll bring it a little closer. So see this one is like super straight and that has like a little texture on the line to be like, it's slightly closer, <laughs> just a smidge. Awesome. Okay, great. So, um, following what I had mentioned earlier, so I wanted to make a slight adjustment to the background of this painting. So in this painting, there's this like green hilly area that comes across here. I'm gonna change that and I'm gonna put in some water instead. So basically instead of using green, I'm gonna use blue to make some water, like a little kind of stream of some sort that's gonna come around this way. And then I'm gonna put in that green mountain thing that's closer here. So there's going to be some water that's going to do that. So I'm going to put in that water first. I'm going to go in with my, mm, yeah, I'm still going to use this medium brush. Um, and I'm just going to go in with blue and I might change up the color as I go. And I'm going to decide where I want this water to flow. So with this water, it's going to come here and then I want it to come like kind of like a C shape, I guess. And then it kind of goes off the page. And we're not going to see a lot of that anyway because we're going to have, you know, the porch and stuff in our way. But I'm still going to paint it in. So once we put those spindles and stuff on our balcony, we'll be able to see this water through it. 
That's, that's very deep, actually. I probably don't need to go that far at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I only need to go about there. Yeah, let me just change that up. Okay. I was a little ambitious with my water making skills. Bright, bright blue for now. Okay, so ignore that bottom part. I should have just been a bit closer. We're gonna get rid of that very soon. I'm just gonna do this so you know that don't follow that. So ignore that messy water pattern. <laughs> just that's my actual water. We're gonna paint over that in green after, so it's all good. Okay, cool. So that's where I want that water to live. Okay. And it's not going to be like, we're not going to see a lot going on there. I do want it to be a bit more opaque than what's going on right now. I'm going to add like a touch of black just to make it a little darker. So I'm just putting black right on my blue just to give it a little bit, a little bit of dark. further back it is it's in shadow as it comes up closer it just becomes blue oh nice not the jacket is on that's cool okay i need it to dry so i can put in some more details on there that's why it's good when i make mistakes too so you can see how we can cover it up later so <laughs> The perfectionist in me is like, ah, but it's actually good. <laughs> it's good when you're bothered by something to kind of push yourself in those weird situations. So you like stop getting bothered by them, I guess. <laughs> All right. So I do want to, I'm going to put in that, like, there's like a lot of like greenery right in here. Um, and then there's some this big hilly thing comes all the way down and around. So we're gonna put that in as well. Okay, so where are we gonna go next? I think I do wanna put in um, these green trees and stuff. So this lives on top of this guy. You know what? I need that guy to be a bit darker in the background. I feel like he's still a little too bright. So I'm putting a little bit of black and I'm putting green on top of it and I'm just mixing it I want the other green ones that I'm going to put to really stand out on top of this. Of course, I'm using this brush, and this brush is tricky. Yeah, I want, yeah, that's better. It's darker. Oh! <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't realize it was going to be on that arm. I used to, um, I used to work at Starbucks, and so that's why I'm wearing um, this shirt. Yeah, <laughs> a long time ago. It was it's a fantastic place to work, but yeah, you're right. I should I should have realized that. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. I don't even know if they want to be affiliated <laughs> with my painting. I'll just do it like this from now on. <laughs> Thanks for noticing that, Asif. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's um, put in these ones here. So here, these are going to come out. So again, the whole smushy brush notion. Green. Every time I add, I'm putting more green on my brush and smushing my brush around. And, come around. and then we'll smush it all the way down. black 
and we're going to do similar. I'm just going to put in some black in here. It's tricky because everything's wet, so I don't want it to blend out and become this like all one color, but I do want to just start getting in some of this in here. So I'm just trying to be cautious when I'm putting this in afterwards where I'm dabbing my brush, otherwise it's all going to just blend together into one jumble of color and I don't want that to happen. So I might just do that and like leave it until it dries and then I'm going to then put some more on top of that because right now it looks kind of weird. Okay, so I'm just cleaning out that brush a little, little bit. All right, and then now I'm gonna jump back over while that dries a bit and put in um, these trees that live all along here. So let's think about how we're gonna do this. So we could do it where we, we literally build out every tree. I'm like tempted to do that because it's not like too many trees and I think that might give it some good feel. Mm. Yeah, I think we should do that. Okay, so I'm going to get my, where's my thin brush? I'd rather use my thinner brush for this. Okay, um, no, sorry, my medium brush. What I'm going to do first is I kind of want to just give myself the line. So in the picture, there's like the, the closest green hill, I guess, before it bounces off and then it's like the background. So I want to just plot in where that's gonna live, just to give me a guide of how low these trees are gonna go. So, that's about, that's almost where this is, the trees are actually pretty high. I'm gonna just go a little bit below that, I think. Okay, and then I want this just to be easy to, so I want it to be a slope. Maybe we'll go a little bit higher. Yeah, like that, that's good. Okay, and then it, a little bit higher. <laughs> I'm playing as I'm going. Okay. And that's going to cut right across here. Okay, so that's the line we're going to work with. So we put our trees in and the puffiness that is associated here, we're going to stop at that line there. Okay. Okay, so I'm just making um, some of that dark green again, so it's a little bit darker so I can plot in where I want those trees to live. I still want to see some of these clouds. All right, let's see. So I want... This is going to be my biggest tree, I think. So I'm just going to put his, he's going to live there, I think. We're going to have some other ones come here. So I'm just going to put in where I want some of these stems to live. Stems, oh my gosh, trunks to live. Okay. Let's just put some going on up here. Just using my thin brush to plot out where I want these guys to be. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. I just stopped because I'm thinking that I, I want this background to kind of continue a little bit behind just so we can see it. So I'm actually right now. <laughs> just going to give a bit of a rolling background before I start painting my trees in. And I'm using the same color. I'm just going right on top of them. Not all the way down, just because I realize like, if we're gonna see some background, I don't wanna see the white canvas behind there. Um, and I think that would make more sense if I did that. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just doing that before I start putting in the trees. Okay. So now, I'm gonna get my green and then let's do some dab, 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 dab. And these kind of go upward. So I 
kind of just going back and forth, also dabbing. So we're gonna do a lot today. But I'm gonna, I'm kind of going in like a, like a V shape. Just to get the idea of where we want it to live. And the ones at the top, I want to have a little bit, I want to see the background, but I want to still see some of those clouds behind there. As it comes down, there's more dabbing. I'm gonna need some more paint. And you're gonna, right now you can still see the canvas behind, that's okay. We're gonna end up putting in um, some different colors. So we're gonna put in some darker green as well. So that will cover that up and some lighter green. Right now, let's just get in the shapes of the trees and the tops. Okay, so we have like the idea of where we want those trees to live. I'm gonna go back in and get some of my darker green. So green with a little bit of black in it. Okay. Um, and then I'm, <laughs> okay. I want some of this to live below. And I might still go back and put in the lighter green. I'm trying to keep wherever the branch is. And as the paint dissipates from my brush, I'm not going on necessarily and getting some more. I'm just kind of dabbing and using that. So I'm already creating kind of a pattern and I don't like that. So watch, watch for stamping. I do want a little bit more in this guy. Okay, cool. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get my yellow. So instead of using white to highlight certain parts of the tree, I'm gonna do that with yellow. So same brush, I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow and it already kind of turns into like a light green because my brush is like covered in green. And I'm going to see where I want this to be. Hmm. Okay. Bring this guy here. I'm just going to put in a little bit. I don't think I'm going to do all the trees. I think I'm going to do like some of them just to emphasize that. This tree has a bit of yellow in it. Okay. A little bit of highlight in there. I'm just gonna look from a distance, make sure it doesn't take away from what I'm trying to do. great thing with acrylic paint you play with it so if you do something and you're not a fan of it you wait till it dries and you can paint right over it which is lovely I'm gonna bit this a little bit later here because it's also on top of that other background so I want this tree to come out a little bit more 
There you go. Just some of them are gonna have it just to differentiate that there's different trees that are here. Okay, I think I'm happy with that for now. I always say for now because later on you end up looking at it and you're like, and then we want to add more things to it. That's what I do all the time. Okay. Um, okay, so we want to kind of continue this like, you know what, I kind of do want a bit of a, sorry, before I continue. See, I just said I'm going to move on and then I'm not. Um, I want this bush to be a little bit lighter too. I want it to clearly show that there's it's at, in front of this background. That's better, I think. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I wanna put in um, more greenery that's gonna like kind of surround where this, this lake that we built in lives. So with my, I'm still gonna be my thin brush for now and then we'll see if I'm gonna switch over. I'm just gonna, again, signature move, the dab. Just gonna dab, 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 dab. stroke in some paint just to cover it up a little bit faster. And then dab, 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 Okay, and then we're gonna do it here too. So I'm just gonna do this for background and then I'm gonna add in some more texture and details. Let's just get this green. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want this to dry a little bit before I put more on it because right now it's still very, um, I can see through it. I'm going to go back to this area here and just add a little bit more to it. So I want to put some definition in here. So I want to have, I just got light or green, like a lighter green, and I'm just going to create some highlights to try to make this stand out a little bit more. just putting them in different spots because again this isn't just like one giant bush this is supposed to be like a bunch of trees and greenery that lives here so I'm just going to try to create that idea of it by putting like little circular arcs I guess they're more arcs I suppose like that, just to give it a little bit more. So there's something going on here. I'm jutting into the water a little bit. And that works out nicely. Cool. Okay, and that is more defined than that one. So that's the least defined, a little bit, you can see. And then here you have a bit more texture on that one. And again, it's not super detailed. It's still just giving that feeling of what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Okay. So while that part dries, before I put in some more definition in there, I'm going to go and I want to fill in where I want that green to be. So that's going to come down. I'll say my deck's going to be about there. So I'm going to put green, pretty much this whole area is going to be like a solid green which then will allow me to put in some more background if I, if I so desire. I may or may not put in that bushy plant that you can see behind. I think I might leave that out. I do want this to be a lighter green, so I'm gonna make it more of a yellow green. So if you have pre-mixed green, add some yellow to it to make it lighter. If you don't, then just put a little bit of blue into yellow and make it like a lighter um, shade of it. I might do some of the mixing on the canvas realistically too. Okay, so I'm gonna have it come down to about here. 
more or less. We'll see. I kind of feel like I give the background a lot of space, <laughs> but we'll see. My chair is going to be tiny chairs. hill is in the, this is your hill so this hill is going to be right in the front that's oh, yellow right here it feels really good when i can cover up my mistake <laughs> okay, so this guy is right in the foreground going. I didn't really paint outside very well, but that's okay. It's a campus board, so I'm probably not hanging it up in, or if I do, it'll be in a frame or something, but realistically, I'm not hanging this up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to bring this up a little bit higher, but I don't know if I'm going to do that yet because I still want to put in some stuff. So this line will be like a nice solid line to really differentiate the front from the back, but I still want to do a little bit here and here. So I'm not going to worry too much about making that like hundred percent bang on perfect. Um, and I also want to make this more opaque. I want this to be a bit stronger and to cover that blue mistake I made. So I'm going to put another coat on this too, once that dries. Okay. Looking pretty nice so far, I think. I hope you guys are happy with your painting so far and you're enjoying it beautiful Saturday afternoon. I'm not advertising Starbucks anymore. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> My the thing keeps falling down. All right. Um, I think, yeah, it's dry. Yahoo. Okay. So I'm going to, um, just put in a little bit of detail in here. So I want to put some shrubs and some stuff that's happening. Um, that you can see a bit uh, more in the foreground. I do want to be um, a bit darker, so I'm going to use that black paint into my green paint to make a dark green going on. I'm going to start with that. Okay. And what am I going to do? Let's think. Um, okay. There's definitely some like shrubbies, so I'm going to do again some of like, my blotches, my smushes of paint. And it's okay if it goes into your rolling green hill, that line at the beginning, because we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna touch it up nicely. Okay, so let's just pop in some of these values here. My door just opened and that was really creepy. Okay. For some texture, I'm gonna, it's gonna come up here a bit. Okay, I'm gonna get my regular green, do the same thing. That's a little bit too much paint. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I like that too much. So I'm just gonna put some splotches of lighter green, some splotches of darker green. Okay, so it just has a couple different values going on. Also, there are some trees that kind of pop up more paint on this. Okay. But putting that on there just kind of gave it a little bit of an extra depth there, which I liked. Which I like. Present tense. Okay, if I had a thinner brush, I would go in and put a little bit more, try and put some little details, but I think 
my brush is not going to cooperate me that way and it's going to end up being really fat so i'm not going to do that there's some you can see there in the paint the picture there's like you can see like some little trees that have more defined like branches if you have like a, a brush that's going to cooperate with you um a thinner one i might i would suggest maybe doing a little bit of that just to get a little bit more texture and detail in the background but i'm not going to take that risk right now with um with the brush that i have I, might, I can always go back and do that another time. Okay, so now that I've put that texture in, I want to clean up that line. I want it to be a nice, solid um, line right across. Okay, so, and now that it's already drier, get some more paint. Yellow and green paint. Okay, using my medium size rough brush again so I'm just gonna clean up that line I want to make it like very noticeable this is like a hill solid straight my solid line it can be curvy though it can be bumpy that's totally fine it just needs to be like smooth smooth it does not have to be straight it can be bumpy that works out quite nicely so I'm just gonna so I'm just doing a bit of a gradient here too so I just made it a little bit lighter that rim there and I'm just going to put in some green paint coming away from there and blending it just into it a little bit. I want this to be more opaque. I can still see the texture of the canvas through it and I want this part to be very like manicured. Like someone definitely, someone definitely was um, mowing their lawn here, keeping it nice and even. There's no weeds growing here. There's no random things happening. It's just even. Even Steven. Okay. I'm going to go back for a moment. Yeah, I like that. That works. Okay, so I think now we already have that. We have achieved that, right? So we have like the different layers of background. So we have like our sky, our furthest, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, way closer. Right, right up in the front. <laughs> so that's really has a nice uh, feel to it. It's giving a nice depth to this painting. I don't know about you, but my one water container is no longer clear water. So I'm gonna switch it over to my other one. All right, it's three o'clock, so that's not bad. So that's an hour and we have, essentially we have our background pretty much done. So that's fan freaking tastic So what we're gonna do now while that dries is I'm gonna put the base layer of the floor in place okay because basically this is where the deck's gonna live the floor of the deck the wood and then we're gonna have that banister is gonna come up about here right and then we have the boards that come up there boards I don't know I don't know names of uh, <laughs> proper names of things <laughs> the way the piece the, the lines go here and then you have the banister I know what a banister and then we'll put the rest of it in so let's I'm gonna get that smacked on there so I'm gonna use brown and I'm using a premix again just to save me time um so I have a premix brown the one I have is called cinnamon brown from the lovely dollarama probably gonna need more than that realistically mm. no let's just start with that and then we'll there. okay so hopefully everyone's doing good I don't, haven't seen any other comments and stuff for a bit so oops sorry just moving my so if you guys need anything, let me know. I will keep, continue to keep an eye on that. Okay, cool. So, um, just debating whether I want to like, I do, I'm going to wash it out. Okay, I'm going to use water and then just, just so that it will cover it quickly and then I might have to put another coat, but that's okay because we're going to put in some more detail anyway. Okay, 
So I'm just gonna wet the canvas right now with water. <laughs> so I magically think that's gonna like erase my mistake. It, it's not. <laughs> We're just gonna have to paint over it and deal with it. All right, so now that it has, it's wet, get my brown. Oh, let's put the brown on. And you see when you have it wet, it very easy to cover it very quickly but it's very thin it's not very opaque but that is okay because we're gonna be putting all the things on top of it that actually kind of is working considering this type of brush too this brush again is also pretty um the bristles are very hard so it's kind of creating like a wood texture in a way. But we're not going to worry about it being like super realistic in that way, right? So. Did I make a level deck? I think so. I think we'll be okay. I think I want this to be a little bit lighter. I feel like this is a little too dark for me. I think so. I'm gonna grab a bunch of white and I'm gonna throw it on top, see what happens. Again, benefits of using water on the canvas first. It makes it very easy to blend and mix colors right on your canvas. I saw the sun's starting to come into this room a lot. I'm going to have to close this window soon. Okay, I think I want to put a little bit of white too at the bottom here to lighten up this brown. Yeah, that's much better. Is that the shadow or is that? Yeah, that's a shadow. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna need to figure out this window because it's gonna throw me off and how this is looking. Ooh. All right, let's see if that makes things better. Yeah, a little better. It's a bit dark, I find, but if I use my own light, maybe that will be okay. Hmm. Maybe, no, that's pretty more shadows. Okay, I'm just gonna do this here, I think. Yeah. Oh no. Sorry guys, I'm trying to figure out the lighting now. You know what? I'm just going without a light, it's fine. We could go this side up maybe. Okay. All right, that's better. It was creating like a weird shadow and I wasn't sure if that was um, the color of the paint or what was happening, so. Now there's some areas that are still um, showing some of the canvas. I'm just going to try to cover that up a little bit. I'm liking the gradient that I have going on. It's like, it's not like super intense, but there is a slight difference of color, which I like. What is this on? Cool. Without lights, okay. Thank you, Asif. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I think it's looking better. It looks okay for you guys. That's very important. I still need to be able to see what I'm doing, <laughs> but I can, so that's positive. All right. So, um, like I said, I know there's a bunch of like shrubby bush things here. I'm not gonna do that. So, if you wanna do that, 
go for it. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to do like a kind of a smush technique again. So you're going to want to use a little bit of browns and some greens and then some yellows. And then smush, I would use like a thin brush or one of your finer brushes. Um, and then try to get some little edges, uh, very crisp and clear. Um, so you can like really see the definition since that's really close up. Um, but just for the sake of time and I, I want to get more into this foreground, I'm not going to do that part. And honestly, I'm not really that interested in the way it looks. Like I think it's kind of blah. So I, I'm not gonna, I'm not doing it. Um, okay. On that note, um, everything else is good. I think I do want to touch this background up a little bit before I paint something in the foreground. I'm just gonna clean off my brush before the paint dries on it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get my middle brush and I'm just gonna get some green paint and I just wanna touch up some of this before. Just take a look and see because once we put on that banister and all those um, spindles, I think that's what they're called, spindles, um, touching up the back is not going to be fun. So I would say take a look at your painting right now and see if there's anything you want to, to fix up, cover up, if there's any spots that are showing through that you don't like. Again, with me, I like this hill as very opaque. It makes me feel like it's very manicured. I want it a little bit with yellow in it. So I'm just putting in some yellow. I think that is better. I like that. There's still a little bit here that I want to. The paint like soaks into the canvas as you go too. So sometimes you don't see it right off the bat, but you see it a little bit after. Okay. Okay. So I'm just touching up a few little spots here and there. Feel free to do the same. I added like a little bit of yellow in little spots just so that it some highlights happening. I don't want it to be super dark green. I want it to be brighter than the other ones. Oh, I got excited there for a second. I thought this was like an instrumental version of a Backstreet Boy song, and I got really excited. <laughs> and it wasn't, and I'm kind of sad. <laughs> That's what I need to find. I need to find instrumental music versions of Backstreet Boy songs. That'd be fantastic. Although you guys then might end up hearing me sing the whole time, which may not be so fantastic. All right. Um, okay, so touch that up. Now I'm happy. So I'm ready to put on um, that banister. Um, not gonna do that right yet because it is still wet because I just played with that. Um, so let's come back down here and let's put some detail into this um, wooden floor. Now, I don't wanna go crazy on the detail because again, I'm not trying to make it super realistic, but I do wanna give it that vibe that it's a wood um, floor um, and it has, you know, like wood, um, what do you call it? Like two by fours that basically built this deck of some sort, right? So there's the grooves in it and I like the texture of that and I wanna put that in. So I'm going to use like a dark brown to get that feeling. I'm a little worried about this brush. Oh, I wish I had a thinner brush. I don't trust this one. It's like fatter, but it has a thin point. Okay. Well, that's what I'm going with. Okay. We're going to try. So when we're doing this, we got to think about our perspective. So if you're going to join in with me and put these lines in, you don't have to, if you don't want to, um, you're going to have the lines 
um, be closer together the back here and as it comes forward the lines are going to be further apart until you get up to the front okay in the picture there's tons there's like if I just look at here right now there's probably like 15 or 20 like there's like I would say about 15 ish to 20 um, grooves that's a lot um, I don't think I'm gonna go that far to put in like 15 lines across to try to keep my hand steady the whole time I don't think that's gonna work um, but we want that that vibe of it so I need a little bit more brown I still have some black okay so I'm gonna mix black into my brown to get a very 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 dark brown but I don't want it to be black Sure. So I'm, I'm using, this one is uh, my thin brush. Um, this one is a size three. Um, but it really depends on the canvas size that you're using. I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas. I would prefer if I had a size one brush. I don't. Um, cause I feel like that would make it easier to get thinner lines. That being said though, sometimes you might have a thicker brush that just has a better fine point. So if you, you have to kind of see what you have at your disposal and use the one that is going to cooperate best. I know it's not the best answer, but <laughs> that's the answer I have. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing, um, like I said, making a very dark brown and I'm using my thin brush. I added a little bit of water to try to make it very, um, easy to spread on the canvas. Okay. Let's see, where am I gonna start? Oh, it's always scary when you gotta put these on. Okay. Um, do I wanna start at the back? Okay. What I'm gonna say, which is what I'm saying to myself as well, is don't worry, if you make a mistake, it's a, it's acrylic, we can let it dry and we can paint over it. So if that happens to me, that's what I'm doing. If it happens to you, you can do the same thing, okay? So don't stress about it. And yes, I'm saying that to you, but I'm saying that to me more. <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. okay. Let's see. Do I want to start at the top or at the bottom? Ah, okay. Also, when you're doing it, move the canvas to make it convenient for you. I'm going to try to do this so you can still see what I'm doing on camera, which makes it a little bit trickier. So my lines are probably not going to be super straight, but we're just going to do it and see what happens. Okay, where, where do I feel comfortable with this? Maybe like here. Think I'm not gonna worry about it being super opaque all the way across. I'm just gonna get a vibe of this line. Okay, that's one. And then I'm just gonna touch some of the gaps. try to remember to breathe when I'm painting. I definitely realized I was holding my breath. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's my first line. This one's gonna be pretty close to that one. Trying to keep it as straight. I'm trying to keep my pressure to be very similar. I definitely know as I continue going out, I think my pressure is going to be harder, which I'm going to try to just embrace because what can I do? Okay, I'm going to try to make this one a little bit bigger. Getting slightly closer. That made a mess there. It's okay. I'm sure a chair is going to be there. It's going to cover it, so it's fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, I feel like it's going to be weird. Okay. Fine. 
I know it's a bit weird. My deck might not have been made as well as the one in the photo. I did not hire professional contractors for my deck, so the construction's a little shoddy. So as you can see, I'm trying to make them a little bit thicker as I'm coming up to the front. And yes, it's not perfect and that's okay. And yes, I am saying that to myself as well as to you guys, but it's also reassuring to me. Oh, I just went straight ahead of that line. That was strange. Okay. Sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna do. It just happens. Okay, so we're gonna be wider. I don't feel as confident with that one, that's for sure. <laughs> well, I think that's what I'm doing. I think that's where it's gonna end up there. Okay, so it's not perfect. Definitely um, a little bit off. Um, you guys can definitely, if you want it to be more straight, feel free, you could use, there's a few things. There's like acrylic paint markers. So that gives you a lot of precision and control. So if you get one of those, I do have some, I just prefer like not to, I don't know if, it, actually, you know what? Do they have acrylic paint markers? I'm not sure, maybe it's just oil-based paint markers. You know what, I'm not 100% sure on that. I know there's paint markers and that definitely helps um, just because they end up not being like a, a brush, but it's actually like a marker and it can help you have more control over where you want your lines to be. Um, so you could potentially use something like that to help with it. I don't know how oil would interact with that, but I know there's definitely options. Other, alternately, you could literally, if you have it flat um, on a table as you're doing it, you could have like a ruler or a piece of paper or cardboard or something to guide you. That's totally, that will work 100%. Um, so you can do whatever you want. I just wanted to go with my hand because, um, I don't know, I guess I like to try to make a fool of myself in front of you guys. <laughs> We're just going to try it out and see what happens. But you can do any way, which way to, to get that uh, going. Um, and yeah, Asifa, you're interested to see the color preparation. Yeah, I wanted to be able, I don't know how to do that because um, it would be great to have like a camera or something available so I could show you that as I go through it. Um, but I don't have that right now. And I'm trying to think of the best way to go about that so I don't have that as an option at the moment but okay I'll try to walk you through and I'll maybe I'll try and pick up my uh, palette a bit more to show you guys all right so I have that going everything else is pretty much dry right now so I do want to put in where we want this banister to to live um, and again you can also then use a guide for that I'm probably just gonna see what happens and uh, paint it in with my hand um, so we're gonna do that. All right, so with the banister, um, there, it's actually quite white because there's a highlight right on the top. I'm not gonna worry about that right yet. I'm gonna use like a light brown to put that in, okay? So my, my palette is, is very, um, my palette is very um, uh, messy, so bear with it, it's very gross. Um, so I'm going to put in, um, quite a bit of white. Um, no, I'm gonna bring brown over, I think. Brown, come to my white area there. Beautiful, okay. Let's mix that. So I'm gonna do like a very light, like a light brown. Okay, so I'm just mixing a very light white into the brown and I'm just making it very light. Okay, and I'm putting some water 
just to make it easy and smooth for me to try to have a straight line as I do this also by hand. Okay, so that banister is gonna live about here, I think, just below this hill and just across. Okay, so challenge. Sorry if I'm in the way. Okay. It's pretty straight. So now I'm just going to make this a little thicker. I'm just trying to make sure I have enough paint and enough water in that paint color so it's smooth but it's not going to drip. Yeah, that's straight enough for me. Good with that. All right, awesome. Okay, fantastico. Okay, and then um, we also have like the base of it. I'm gonna keep it the same color, but then I'm going to um, put some shadow and stuff on it as well, so it matches more of the bottom. But I'm just gonna use this color just for the sake of continuity. Um, so this lives just above, so you're gonna be able to see the. Um, green in between. So I'm trying just to follow my floorboards across. And I'm noticing that every time I stop, I'm, I'm like my hand moves slightly up. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep that down. All right, so I'm just going to thicken that up a bit. I think before I put these spindles in, I want to put in the highlight of the, like make it dark or make it light, like put the little, sorry, I want to put either the shadow or the highlight into those um, banister lines before I do that. Because I think once I put in the banisters, it might make it a little trickier to do. I think, I think. So, I need more white. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so I'm going to use white paint. 
I'm putting a little bit of water again just to make it easy to spread. Okay. On the white paint, I'm going to make a highlight just on the top of the line I just made. So I'm just going to make another line on top of this line, not on top of it, sorry, like right on top of it, like not above it, like not in the green, but actually on the actual brown. Um, I'm just going to try to get like a thin line. Just a little bit. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, cool. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. Okay, so with white, okay, I have, I have water on my brush, I put it in the white paint, okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a, like a thin white line at the bottom here too. I don't know why I'm trying to get the corners to have a white highlight too, but I am. There we go. Okay. White highlight, top and bottom. Beautiful, beautiful. And then I'm going to add um, a little bit of dark as well, just to try to make this pop. Pop, pop. Um, I'm going to just use my brown. Also put some water in it. Just so it's easy to make a nice line with it same idea and what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna go right below that white line Ooh, now watch out so you don't like spread Okay, it's a little weirdly thick here, so I'm gonna touch that up with the lighter brown afterwards. Cause that kind of got weird. But I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom here too. Um, how am I gonna do the bottom? Kinda just looks thicker. But I don't want it to be super thick. Okay, I'm just gonna do the same type of thing. It might end up being a little bit thicker this line and that's fine. get some of that lighter brown I did and just touch up some of my weird lines that I made with the darker brown. I think that's good. It's a little bit bad on the left side, so I'm going to bring this down slightly.
just going over with a lighter brown again, just touching up because some of it wasn't very straight and I just want it to be more even. Okay, cool. Now let's put in some of those, call them spindles. I don't know if that's the right word. Those lines to make sure people don't fall off. <laughs> that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so I'm gonna go back with that light brown color and mix some of that again. Okay, so the same kind of color I used to kind of to put in my um, banister railing of sorts. I'm gonna use that same color. And we're gonna put in these. Okay, and again, I put water on it. Um, just to make it almost the consistency of ink and then now I'm going to put in these lines and these lines are pretty much the same distance apart and I'm just gonna put them downwards and they're gonna go they're just gonna go to the top so they're gonna go to the top of the white they're not gonna go below the white and they're gonna go they're, they're gonna touch into the where the shadow is so let me oh, okay so I scared you the first one There. And I'm going to go with the thickness of the brush that I'm using and that's gonna be the width of it essentially. I might still thicken it up afterwards but that's gonna be how it's gonna work right off the bat, okay? So let's keep them about the same distance. Try to keep it straight all the way down. Okay. okay. Let's put them in and then if we need to go over them to make them a little darker, we can do that. Noticing too as I'm going, my things are getting a little thicker. I don't think that was enough paint on that brush. keeps moving. Well, I'm doing moving it, obviously, but it's not staying straight. Okay, there we go. Well, some of them are going to be a little thicker than others. That's okay. Again, whatever is the best way for you to have control over it, do it. So if you need it, you know, put this upside down, put this sideways, whatever works for you, do that on, for your painting. Ah, touched it weirdly, okay.
keep going with this. Okay, so that is the placement of those, again, calling them spindles. Oh, Terry says she's using painter's tape. That's really smart. Yeah, that's a really good idea, Terry. That will help make those lines much smoother. I'm a stickler for just seeing how it happens. <laughs> I like, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I must do it this way. No aids. <laughs> then I still like get annoyed if it doesn't look really great like even now like it obviously is not 100% and it is bothering me but at the same time I'm like eh, it's okay it's fine it's fine I'll do that okay so some of these um, have a little bit of white so the ones maybe like the first like five or six have like a touch of white highlight because like, the Sun's coming from like the side and these ones don't really have any so I'm gonna add a little 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 bit of white just to like a little white line Um, just to the sides of these here. Okay, as I get closer, I'm just going to make it more thinner and hardly there. Yeah, so these ones are a little thicker. A little too thick. I'm probably going to thin that up a bit. Ooh, it got really dark outside. This one needs to be a little thicker. Those ones are so thick. Light. Ah, that's looking like poop. Okay, just gonna leave that for a second and let it dry out a little bit. Okay, so I just put a little bit of light on these ones. Oh, this looks a little bit poopy, so I'm just gonna try to fix it a bit. There we go. Okay, nice. Okay, that works. We're gonna leave it as such. Okay, so we got a nice railing in. Okay, 341, not too shabby. Wonder if I can open this up again. Yeah, I'm gonna open that up again for a bit more light. Okay, perfecto. All right, so we got a balcony. No one's moved in yet, apparently. Nothing's going on. So um, let's put in um, a few other aspects. So we need to put in, um, we need to get that table in, and then we need to get the chairs in, and we also have those. Um, I guess they're like, I don't know if they're just like beams that hold everything up or if they're like curtains. I don't know what I want to do with them actually. You know what? I'm not going to put that in right yet. I'm not going to put those lines in right yet. No. Um, I'm going to put in the table. That's what I want to do next. Okay, let's do the table. So this table is a wood color. It's very um, light. So I'm going to use like brown with yellow to make it a little bit more richer and yes I do need more brown on my palette again because I'm using so much brown today okay 
Hope you guys are doing good still. Okay, so this is taking a little bit of time. So we still have to put in our chairs and our table. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get the table in and I'm pretty sure we're gonna get in to be able to plot out where our chair is. And that will bring us to two hours and then it's up to you guys. If I'm still feeling the way I'm feeling right now, I'm gonna just continue on. Um, and you're welcome to stay on obviously with me. And if it's too annoying, then I might stop it if I decide I have to pee or something. <laughs> Tends to be the way, why I stop. Okay, um, so that's kind of like a mustardy color, which I like. Okay, I'm going to put the table in. So the top of the table is gonna live in this area. Um, there was a really good suggestion that came in. Um, I don't remember who did it. Um, she put it under a different painting that we done a few weeks ago to use um, chalk. So if you're not sure exactly where um, you wanna place something, so like right now, if you're like, yeah, I don't know where I want that table to go, I don't know if it's gonna look good. Um, she suggests using chalk and you can like draw right on the painting with your chalk because it will come off, right? Um, and then you can decide where you want things to go and then you can just like get rid of the chalk when you're done with it. Um, so just as a tip, if you guys have chalk and if you wanna use that, I thought it was a really good idea when you're trying to place things and you're not sure where you're gonna like them. Um, so my table is gonna be here. Um, I always try to start a little smaller than what I think it's gonna be and then I make it bigger. So I'm gonna kind of put like an oval -y shape going on here. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit more. I want this to be a little bigger. And I think I want it to be a little bit brighter actually. I feel like it's very dark. to come out this way. Okay, so right now we're just gonna get the shape of it and the main, or the base color in. You can make your table any color you want. It can be purple. It can be yellow, it can be white. It doesn't matter. whatever color you want. Make it whatever shape you want. I'm gonna stick with this kind of ovally shape, but maybe you want it to be a square, maybe, maybe your oval doesn't turn out to be a perfect oval and you wanna make it like an abstract art piece that looks kind of funky, do it. Okay, so we have that. No, I think I want, mm, no, I'm gonna continue with this color just to get a base going in here. And then I'm gonna go in and put some shadows and highlights. Okay. Okay, so I wanna put in where I want those legs to live. So the legs are gonna come about there, I think. Okay. Um, and <laughs> that one's kind of crooked. She needs to be a bit. I have to fix this up. Or just make this one fatter. You know, it's fat. Looks a little funky. We'll have some chairs to, we're gonna cover it up a bit. I'm gonna make this one like three legs. So I'm just gonna make it even funkier. And this other leg is gonna shoot back. It's gonna be fatter up here and it's gonna shoot back. 
be more like a stupid, I guess. <laughs> yep. That's my table. We'll see. My stool. Okay, I'm just going to make this a bit more opaque because I can see the green a lot through here. So I'm just going to put another layer in certain aspects of it before I put in um, shadows and some highlights. Okay, so I'm gonna let that do its thing. Okay, and then now I wanna put in, um, so while that dries, um, I'm gonna plot in where I want my chair to be. So again, um, a great tip is use chalk instead. So use chalk and kinda like draw in where you want it to be before we actually pop the paint on. Um, I'm gonna continue to use this mustardy color for now just to plot it out because I want to I'm going to paint it on top anyways a different color so that works out fine um okay so which chair am I going to start with okay so this chair is like here and the arm comes down okay so I, again look at the shape don't think about it being an arm don't think about it being the back of the chair it is a curved line it starts about up here okay and then we're gonna curve it down so here okay and then it comes down and then it comes over it goes in front of the leg and then it comes down oh make sure this is not going to betray me. Okay. And this only goes to about there-ish, I think. Because it's further away. Okay, so again, just gonna add some water. here comes out and then it's going to come inward and where is it going to go inward to till about halfway oh this chair is going to look funky where is the back leg going to go the back leg is going to go to about here so this has to come down further talking out loud again I'm working it out as I'm going so you guys can hear my mental processes <laughs> hopefully that's enjoyable and not annoying um, okay, so I'm going to bring this down. It's like the bones of this chair. And it's going to come out. Okay. Looks kind of funky right now, right? Okay, that's all good. like my leg is going to come off the canvas on this one because I made it a little bit, I made a little bit of a bad return on the picture. Okay, so you have this whole vibe. This leg comes down further, so it's closer. This one is next close, so it comes down a little bit back and that one stays closer to the front. That works. Okay, now we have the base of it so that's gonna come from back here and it's gonna come forward like so okay and this too so this one's gonna come from over here and it's going to then go with a straight line but midway to where that lives Okay, so we have like the a bit of a structure of the chair going on here. Okay, and then let's see what else we got. Ooh, yeah, let's not do that. I like that line that we have going on. Okay, so we want this to come. What is going on there? Oh, I see. That's the. Okay, so this is the 
arm of the chair is gonna come over like that. It is so windy. Or is it rain? I can't even tell. Oh, it's rain. Oh, that's a lot of rain. Okay. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but wow. It's like intense. <laughs> okay. Back to the chair. Okay. So, um, I want it to be pretty solid. So now that I have where I want it to live, I'm just going to go over some of its lines so that it is a bit more solid and I can't see behind it. Okay. Okay. So that's that chair. Where are we at with time? 3.54. Not bad. Okay. Um, so I want, this part is going to be thicker here. So I'm just going to thicken that up. It's like a nice curved wicker kind of vibe to that. And it comes down this way. Some thick there too. Okay. Just going over my lines to make sure I like the shape of what I'm doing here. Okay. Okay. So now, um, Pretty much this whole chair, we're gonna color it in, um, whatever color you want it to be, and then we're gonna add details on top of it. So you can't really see much of the background through it. There is a little bit of highlights, but not enough for you to keep um, what's behind it showing. Um, so see whatever color you want it to go with. Um, these chairs are a bit darker than the floor, but again, you can start lighter and then go darker. It's really up to you how you wanna do it. Um, let's get a... A color going on here. I don't know if I want. I kind of, in a way, want to do it in white, just so it covers things up, and then I can paint over it nicer. Am I gonna do that? Maybe. Let's let's do that. Okay, let me do that. So I'm gonna go with white, and then still have some yellow on my brush, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of just color inside here. The white will go over the paint that's behind it and cover it really nicely. I'm probably going to go over that line as well. I'm just going to try to get this background covered first. And again, you can paint these chairs along with me, or you can decide that you want to put a completely different type of chair in here, and that is totally cool. You can decide not to put any chairs in here. You can put an elephant or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You can put whatever you want in here. Okay. I'm being a little meticulous to get it in, but it really doesn't matter because I'm still gonna make a, I'm still gonna paint over those lines anyway. But see how the white covers the back entirely? So the white's fantastic for that. So that will just give you a nice base so that whatever, when you put some texture, when you start putting some other things, um, it will be a nice solid chair for you. And like I said, I'm probably gonna paint over um, the bones of the chair, like the outline I just did. I'm just gonna keep it for now, just so I can keep the shape going, but if I go paint over it a little bit on those lines, it's okay. Okay. I'm using a little bit of water just to make the paint a little, um, runnier but I'm not putting too much or else 
you put if the paint's too runny it's not going to cover up the background so you need it to be very solid okay so that's what I have so far for that chair I'm gonna let that dry and do its thing I'm gonna go back to my table and play with that a little bit so I want the top of the table to be lighter is that gonna be too light no I think that's gonna work out good so I just basically just like didn't clean off my brush properly and I just kept a lot of the white that I just used and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint the middle of the table but I want to leave a slight border of this darker color along the top okay and then I'm gonna leave a border along the bottom but I'm gonna make it a little thicker back in actually and fix that it's not working out so well Just give it a little lip That's fine, that works. Okay, I want those lakes to be a little darker. I'm just gonna get some brown. It's a little too light. giving the legs a little bit of texture and just putting a little bit of darkness near the top where the legs meet the top of the table. Just to give it a little bit of dimension. cool all right so we're at four o'clock so it has been two hours so I totally understand if you're kind of like what it's been two hours I need a break that's fine um, I'm gonna be continuing right now cuz I'm still in my groove um, so once um, the session is done then the video will be loaded onto the Facebook site I'm gonna check my battery though yeah okay I'm still good for a little bit so we're good. I'll continue going for a little bit more. I might have to stop. Actually, I forgot about because of my battery. So that might be more of the annoyance. I just want to make sure you can see it, but I don't want my phone to fall. Okay, there we go. We got a chair, so one person can sit. Kind of chairs still under construction. Okay. I also want to put the plant on that table, um, and I want to just hut, like make that line a little bit nicer on the edge of the table. So let's do that. Let me just um, kind of make this light brown. So I'm using um, the brown and the yellow. Just get a goldeny kind of color going on. And I just want to give it a little bit of a lip and just highlight that. Make it more opaque. There we go. touching certain spots of it that I think need it. The top part is actually pretty good, so I don't really want to touch that too much. Okay, yeah, there we go. And then I think I want a little bit of highlight. Just a little bit of light there. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, thank you, Asif. That's sweet. Gonna watch and then finish painting later. Yeah. That works out too, Julia. Cause yeah, it's definitely it can uh, it's fun, but it can take like. Oh. Okay. 
And it's good to step away from it just to be like, okay, does it look the way I want it to look? Is there anything I'm missing? So it, it's nice to take a little bit of a break. Wait, I need to tickle that way more. Yeah, I think like that. Okay, cool. All right. So um, I need to put the other chair in and that all, always makes me a little bit nervous too because I want it to match the other one. <laughs> so again, um, talking you through my mental process and how it's always stressful for me too to make sure that it's going to look nice for you guys to see. Um, and for me, I, I stress myself out doing it as well, but particularly when I want to make sure that I'm helpful. Um, okay, so I'm going to get a bit of brown. I want to get that kind of golden color back in my life so I can plot out the second chair. Okay. Pretty happy with the table, I think. I don't know if I'm going to do much more with it, to be honest. I'm going to put something on top of it for sure, but I don't know what yet. Ah, uh, yes. Julie says her, she has some back issues, so she needs to take a break. I, yeah, I hear you. I should, like, yeah, I should learn my lesson, too. And, like, I, I've always painted sitting cross-legged on the floor ever since I was, like, a teen when I started painting. And I got to say, that's not, um, my body is not so happy with that process anymore. <laughs> but I still do it because I'm most comfortable doing it that way. So it's kind of annoying. I'm, like, refusing to change my ways. Okay, so let's see about this other chair that's going on over here. I know when I, I did a sketch of this before I, um, oh, bye-bye. No, there you go. <laughs> That's what happens when my camera's off. Sorry about that. Sorry I dropped you guys. Um, and when I did the sketch, it definitely, um, definitely helps. I try to do a sketch before I do a painting or especially from a photo just to make sure I got my proportions right and I can somehow replicate it. Um, but I need to make sure this chair kind of works. So the top of the chair is kind of in line with that guy. Okay, um, and it's going to come up to about here. So let's start off, and it's about the same as that one. Okay, so we're going to try to match it up and do like a mirror image. So... Okay, let's get this leg to come down, and it's a little bit ahead. So it's not as far down as the first chair we painted so we're going to just do that okay okay and then we're going to make a curve and we need it to go this chair goes until about here so how big is this chair um let's see if it goes up okay let's do about here I'm using, I'm looking at the reference picture as I'm going. Okay. Okay, that works. And this one, I clearly moved the image slightly over, so. Okay, now let's just plot out where those legs are going to live so that we don't go a little bit too crazy with this. Okay, so this, so we need, see I think I made that too narrow, it needs to go further. This one's kind of closer, so this one's kind of like here. I'm going to come out. Not that far out. I'm going to bring it back in more. Okay. And then that leg is going to go as far back as that leg. Okay, so then this leg's going to come out. It's going to come down to that line. Looks weird right now. Let's see what happens. Okay. Oh, I missed that song. <laughs> and that goes oh, one over. Okay. Okay. So 
like, I know the song and I couldn't pinpoint it. I love this. Okay, so we want then the line to come from back here out. kind of rounds out a little bit this one's kind of round too which we'll probably play with later but it's all good okay so we have that and let's just touch this up Same with the other side, I'm just making these lines slightly more opaque. Okay. That's gonna be my line that comes this way. Okay. And then let's fill it out with some white just to give us a backdrop so then we can put some detail on. I said that and then I'm still touching up. <laughs> okay, let's get white. cover this background up. This is great dance music with instrumentals. It's so great. It's so fun. It's like relaxed high energy. It's great. Relax this time. We're gonna go all night. Don't be the most. Yeah, I'll show you twice. Okay. Like it's dynamite. Okay, so again, I'm just using the white just to cover the background and give a nice base. So when we get the chair details and the color in, it will show up nicer because if you look on the chairs even though there's some patterns you can see some light through it you really can't see the background through the chairs so we don't want to do that here either again unless you do different chairs then you can do whatever you want to right so keep that in mind I'm going to try to do these kind of wickery chairs and I'm using paint, white like water a little bit just because my paint is getting pretty thick. So I'm only using it to get my paint to be not so crazy thick. I'm not using the water as a way to cover it because that's not going to be opaque enough. It's not going to give me the coverage that I want for the base that I want to go with. And again, I'm trying to stay so I'm not going over the lines I made, but if I do, it's not a big deal because I'm going to go over them anyways. Okay. So now we have both chairs there. Awesome. Oh, great, Deborah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm so glad. It's, yeah, it's already 4.12 right now, so it's kicking on a little bit longer. Like I said, um, I might have to stop just because of my battery, which I kind of forgot about last week. It was a rude reminder about that and it just stopped on me and I was like, ah. Um, so I might have to stop and then um, continue recording on my computer uh, for part two. Um, so I'm going to let those chairs dry right now. I'm just going to check my battery. Okay, we're still okay. So I'm going to keep going and see how this goes. Okay, so um, next up, um, while that dries, um, I don't know if I want to just go in and put in that plant. Like, I kind of want to because it's fun. But at the same time, I want to try to play with the chairs to, like, so we can do them together. 
Um, so let's do that maybe. So this guy's dry. Um, so I'm going to just make this more opaque because you can still see um, what's going on behind there and I don't like that. So just going to... I want these to be a little bit darker brown. So I'm just going to get brown on top. So I'm just trying to make the this top part of the chair it's a bit darker so I'm going over what I initially drew in that kind of like mustardy color just with this darker brown which is going to give me coverage and it's also the color that I want this chair to end up being or at least this part of the chair to be I'm just bringing that down. Mm. I'm going to bring it across. going over in this darker brown. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to the front, but I'm not actually doing the whole thing. I'm going to keep some of that mustardy color visible. The same thing here too. I don't want to use that mustard color as like a highlight. I like it. I just use the brown just to um, give me some lines there because it looks like there's like different rods that are making this chair up. Here it's pretty dark because it's in the it's in the shadow, so it doesn't have to be as noticeable. So I'm gonna have a little bit of that sticking on, I think, for now. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, and then I want to start putting in some of those pattern and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring down some lines in this brown color on top of the white. I'm going to do it kind of following the chair. 
Lots of lines in this painting. Same thing over there. It's actually a little darker here because this is where the seat is. So I'm going to create kind of where the seat is. Okay, and then just put in some black. I'm just playing with it a little bit just to see how I want to do this, to be honest, which is why I kind of didn't say anything a second ago. I'm just going to play with it a little bit. I put a little bit of dark, just get some dark brown because this is a little bit darker than the top part because that's where the seat lives. So I'm not sure if I like that yet or not. I just wanted to get some that for now again my brush is not very detailed so it kind of sucks to get into some of this okay mix up some of that mustardy color again so I'm just gonna get the feeling of texture and lines and color here. So I'm just putting in a little bit of that mustard because it's definitely not white in the background. Okay. And I'm gonna try to not get into, like at the same time, if you get touch the top, it's fine. We're just gonna, we'll, we'll touch it up afterwards. So don't worry about that. I'm just trying to get this color feel going of these like lines coming down. I'm okay with some of the white still staying. I want it to be dulled a little bit. So basically I got I have, um, brown and I used some of that mustard color and I just put some lines and then I touch my brush with water and I blend it in a bit just to, it has kind of this vibe of it, but it's not exactly what I want it yet. And again, I sometimes get um, hung up in the details. So right now I'm thinking like, how am I gonna get this perfect texture? But honestly, maybe I'm not going to do that. I'm not gonna stress about it. And I'm just gonna get this vibe, this feel of this chair instead of trying to have this texture happen. Okay, so I'm just adding some more lines in here so that we can kind of see that there's something going on. It's very black down here, I don't know about that. So I'm just gonna put in some of this brown. Okay, I think that's okay for now. up the leg with some brown. Okay. I guess it's like a cushion that we can see there. There's like the curve of the chair and there's like a cushion that's living there, isn't there? Huh. Why didn't I notice that until now? 
Interesting. Okay, let me play with that for a moment. Okay, so there's like a cushion that lives here. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't even see that before. There's like a cushion that lives like here. Which makes sense. It would be a lot more comfortable with this cushion living here. So there we go. So I just got some blue and I just popped it on just to see how it will look. And it kind of does work nicer, having a different color there. So I'm going to just keep that going when I put in some more texture down here. Okay, so... So I'm going to play with this. The texture at the bottom here are like like lines and there's darker lines that kind of come down and then you'll see that there's some lighter ones that do too. So I'm going to try to do a few columns and just do like little sweeps of horizontal lines. Okay, and then I'm going to get a lighter one, like a mustardy color, and then bring it down in between them. just doing the brown so I'm just now going back over again with the brown and just right over the same areas I put the brown in initially I think I'm liking that but it still needs something else going on okay it needs a few things so it needs there needs to be some kind of like top line happening so I need just to solid that way. And I'm going to just go over the bottom line too to do the same thing. And I kind of went over an area I didn't want to go over, so I'm going to just get some more of that mustardy color and touch that up. dark portion of cushion angle so yeah the dark that so the cushion um, I don't understand what you mean um, angle is zero I don't know what that means I'm sorry Asif can you let me know can you clarify that a little bit um, with the cushion I just basically put it right on top for now it does curve a bit so it does look a little bit flat right now um, but we can change it up a little bit I'm going to do the same kind of textury thing in here, but this time the lines is going to be similar, I guess, to the one over there more. Realistically, we're going to bring some lines coming down. I'm trying to keep my brushes cooperating a bit nicer, so I'm getting thinner lines, which is good. Okay, so I'm just want some lines that come down, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the mustardy color in the white spaces. Okay, go back with the brown, going right over the same brown lines I just did, just to emphasize them a little more. My brush is not as thin now.
Okay, that's working. And I think the white coming through is working nicely. I'm gonna get the um, yellow and just put a little bit of a highlight on the sky. Did I come up? No, it just he stops right here. But there is a bit of a highlight on this guy. yellow on there and it stops there there were some details around here too it's like I guess the whatever the chairs are made of it kind of wraps around the legs a little bit and the legs also there's another line here it attaches to the front and here there's like a little curve attach to that. Is there anything back here? I guess, yeah, there's so that curve is supposed to be from there. That's fine. There we go. That works. little ties on all of them. Because that's how it makes sure the chairs don't fall apart. <laughs> okay, so like little yellow lines to kind of resemble like where those ties happen. And I think that's giving that vibe nicely. Oh, cushion view from the back. Yeah, so what I did is I actually didn't built in the cushion at the back here. What I did was um, I just made it a little bit darker um, for the seat because in the picture you can't really tell there's a cushion there, but I guess that's why there's a shadow. So I just made it a bit darker. I'm not sure if I love it, to be honest. I think it's a little bit too stark of a difference. So I'm going to just lighten that up. I used black because I thought I needed to, but I don't think that's working the way I want it to. So I'm just gonna go in, Ooh, careful if you're looking for wet painting. I'm just going to put in, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter actually because I don't, I think using the black was a mistake. Now that you mentioned that, it should be like a little bit darker to have like a shadow, but I don't think we should be able to see how dark that is. That was a little too dark, I think. I'm just going to bring a few more white lines through there. White lines, sorry. Yellow, I'm using some yellow. And then I'm just going to retouch up the bottom line. put some more brown in there now I think it's a little bit too light it's always a back and forth it's like okay is it a little dark okay okay so now it's too light okay that's okay that's part of the process honestly when you layer it too I find that it just gives more depth to what's happening in there well, that's looking pretty good I think this is a little light I'm just gonna working out well. Okay, now, I don't know how we're gonna do this cushion. I don't know what I like about it or what I don't like about it. I'm just gonna add a little bit. I'm not gonna stress too much about making this very realistic. I'm just gonna keep this color on here right now, I think cushion threw me off. They make it blue. It looks kind of weird right now. Does not look like a cushion. Oh, I did just get I see what you mean. Yeah. No, I messed that up, Asif. <laughs> this should be parallel with that line. Yeah, 100%. It should be like that. 
100%. Now I see what you're saying. You're like, it doesn't look right. That's the way it should be. Yeah, that's because I'm too close to this picture and you can see it better from, yeah, this line should have been parallel. You're right. That already looks much better. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. No, you're right. That's the way it should be. I'm just gonna re-add a few lines. A little bit easier to fix than I thought it would be. But yeah, no, it should be line. The line should be up like that. That was my bad. All right, on that note, I do have to um, stop because my battery is about to die. Um, so um, this will be the end of part one and what I'll do is a little bit later I'll record the rest of this and I'll finish it up and then I'll load it to complete. So I'm very sorry that this continued on a bit longer again today, um, and um, but um, I will upload the finished painting and record the rest of it and upload it um, a little bit later today. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me so far, but I'm going to take um, a break right now. Um, I'll have hopefully the finished part of it um, by later on today, so hopefully by about 8 or so um, at the latest. Um, and I think that'll be about it. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, please, if you continue doing your paintings, um, to share them. Um, if you want to wait for me, that's cool too. And then we can complete them, um, a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see your, your paintings and see how you guys have made it your own. Um, like I said, I do still want to add some like fun, like lanterns and stuff like that. So I think I'll do that afterwards. Um, so yeah, so thank you again. And, um, oh, thanks to You're so sweet. Um, you guys are fantastic and thanks for sticking with me. 11 of you guys. You guys are fantastic and amazing. This has been like already two and a half hours. Um, so yeah, thanks so much guys. I'll see you in a little bit and I'll upload the uh, painting party for today. Um, that's it. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Bye.